Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to the Assurity Remote Insurance Practices webinar brought to you by Social Distancing. My name is Jeff McClendon, and I will be one of your presenters today. I am very blessed to be joined by my counterpart, Paige Phelps, who we will hear from a little bit later. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right into this. You know, we're hearing tips left and right about how to do business remotely, but a lot of it can be tough to apply to insurance. That's why we put together this presentation on how you and your business can deal with selling remote and succeed. So today, we're gonna to cover the messages that consumers want to hear and the message that they wanna hear now. We're gonna talk about prospecting from a distance, how we can continue to prospect since we're all in quarantine. We're gonna discuss some tools to make your job easier and then how assured you can meet client needs from anywhere, that virtual service aspect. Uh, if you have any questions as we go through this presentation, I encourage everyone to use the question feature, uh, which you'll recognize by the little question mark uh, where it does say questions. Type your question in there, is when we wrap up this presentation, we'll address as many of those questions as we possibly can. This is a very surreal image. Uh, it's kind of what people are feeling today. You know, it reminds me of looking out your office window at a city landscape where you would normally see cars and you would see people, you would see the hustle and bustle of business. And you look out today and it's pretty bare, it's pretty quiet. It just almost does not feel real. And people kind of feel like their lives are out of control. You know, they're worried about their family, they're worried about their jobs, their livelihood. And of course, everyone is worried about the health of their friends and family. So I think it's very, very important when we're connecting with our prospects, our current customers, to make sure that we are on message. Um, good first impressions are so crucial. And think about this. If you meet someone in an elevator, you generally have about 30 seconds to deliver your sales pitch. So consider this. Is your message refined and current? Uh, is it up to date? You know, in this case, the message we're talking about is one of empathy and empowerment. So regarding empathy, do you put yourself in your client's shoes? I mean, that should be pretty easy today because we're all kind of dealing with the same things. We're all quarantined to our home. We're all missing that physical interactions that we normally have every day. Um, make sure that you're a good listener. When you're asking questions, you wanna ask those open-ended questions. So we want to show empathy in our messaging. And also, we want to have a message of empowerment. You know, your prospect is your hero here, is the hero. The products that you offer, the insurance products that you offer, are basically going to be the solutions to help them overcome uh, those obstacles of financial insecurity. So the call to action is going to be to reach out to you to get a quote, to check out your website, however you want your customer to connect with you. And I would encourage you to give them multiple options. You know, some people just don't like talking on the phone. They would prefer to text. They would prefer to communicate through social media. So I'm a big fan of giving them multiple ways of connecting with you. So some, some keys to remote selling. You know, when you can't prospect in person, remote selling becomes far, far, far more important than it's ever been before. So we're going to go over some best practices from selling away from the office, excuse me, from the office, really focused on four areas. The old telephone, the old email. We're going to talk about social media, which I think is a phenomenal tool to use today. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about Zoom, a web-based conference system that we here at Assurity use, uh, and I think is a good tool for you all as well. So combined, these four techniques can help you stay on track while you're working remote. And you never know, you might even learn something. You may pick up a new skill that you can use when you get back to the office. So cold calls and voicemails. You know, it's a fact that talking on the phone today is the least popular use for a smartphone. Uh, chances are, especially if your prospects, your customers don't recognize your phone number, they may be, you may be getting a lot of voicemails, especially during this crisis. 
So how do you turn a missed call into a sales opportunity? It really starts with having a timer and a sales script, that 30 minute, or excuse me, 30 second elevator pitch. And I know we're not meeting each other, meeting people on elevators, but kind of the same thing goes, that 30 second sales pitch. A cold call is definitely not the right time to be listing a dozen reasons why now's the time to buy or reasons why this carrier's products are better and you know, you got to act now, the limited time, all that good stuff. We really need to think about a message uh, that exudes empathy and empowerment. Make sure your voice, excuse me, make sure your personality comes through in that voicemail, okay? You know what? We all get those automated calls. There's no human touch, human touch to them. So in your voicemail, make sure that you smile. That does come through. That does come through in your voicemail. Also, if there's distracting noises in the background, maybe you've got a car honking, you've got some kids playing in the background, you've got a dog that's barking a little bit, it's perfectly fine. We're all in this together. We're all dealing with a similar type of situations. And it's okay to admit, hey, you know, it's a little crazy around here, but you are my most important thing going on right now. Make sure you deliver the right message. And really, can you convey your point in fewer than three sentences, you really want to aim to answer three questions. Number one, what is the issue? And what do they need to do next? How are they going to connect with you? Are there multiple ways for them to respond? As I mentioned, email, text, phone, social media. Um, if you have an established relationship with them or you have connections in common, uh, it's perfectly fine to go ahead and mention that. It adds that human touch to it. You don't want to be fast while leaving your message. You don't necessarily want to talk too fast, but time is precious. And the best voicemails combine all of the above elements in as few words as possible. Email. Keeping your message brief in an email is, is, of course, important and shouldn't really be any different than the information that we described with making calls, making cold calls and leaving voicemails. Keep one thing in mind, though. You know, people are very suspicious of phishing and fraud attempts by email. So try to create a call to action without any links in your email. I love to add a picture. It kind of puts that personal touch. Hey, this is an actual person that's emailing me, not just a system. Mention your social media accounts, something, anything besides clicking on a link for more information. Now, subject lines. Subject lines are crucial to getting your email opened. Obviously, if people trust who the email was sent from, the very next thing that they're going to check is that subject line. And I'm going to talk about a couple of guidelines you can follow to make sure that you write a great subject line. Number one, be personal. If a prospect's name is in that subject line, it looks like it was meant directly for them and not sent out to a massive distribution list. And don't forget those key messages of empathy and empowerment when you're reaching out. You know, number two, another way to get emails open is by starting a conversation. If that subject line asks about a prospect, they're very likely going to be more inclined to open it and respond. And that's the key. We all get tons of emails every single day. What are you going to do to set your email apart to get their attention, to get them to click and open that email? A great tip for creating subject lines is to include a strong verb that makes people want to act. You know, they're already thinking about doing something even before they click to open that email. So that subject line is a very, very important thing to make sure that is on point. Lastly, you know, stay away from using all caps. We don't want to be make it seem like we're yelling at people or screaming at people. Check your punctuation, your sentence structure. I know myself when I'm sending out prospecting emails, I'll have a couple of my counterparts or a family member read just to make sure that it makes sense, to make sure that it flows appropriately. Um, punctuation and that sentence structure are very, very crucial uh, in, in drafting the emails. Uh, let's talk about social media. So when you're not meeting clients face-to-face, -face, it can be very difficult to build that rapport uh, with your customer. You know, that's where really social media comes in. 
it's a great place to research your prospects before you talk to them because you can learn a tremendous amount, you know, by checking their social media profiles, you can kind of learn what their frame of mind is right now. You know, it can kind of be the key to approaching them with the right message. If they're nervous, um, you know, they're, they're unsure about something, you want to exude that confidence and let them know that, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you in your time of need. Do you have things in common with them? You know, maybe it's a sports team. Maybe it's a, a travel spot, anything. Do you have anything in common with them? that you can find out through social media. Again, another way of connecting with them. Are they having issues? And this is something that I think is very, very important is going through these social media accounts that you can see, are they talking about the loss of a family member, maybe a family member that's been infected or they purchased a new home, whatever it may be. You know, are they having issues? Are they having struggles right now uh, that you can help with? And, and what do they need to protect? If your clients have a big family or a new home, you know, they may but might be wondering about protecting those things. So looking at their social media feed can help you see what's important to that prospect. One other thing regarding social media, you know, I've got some friends and family members that post all the time on social media. So it's really easy to tell what's going on in their life. Other people rarely if ever post. So sometimes it can be difficult to find out much about them, but that should also help. How are you going to connect with them? If they're not real active on social media, we're going to want to go back and, and really focus on the, the voicemails and the emails. We're going to talk about video conferencing options. Zoom has been a star of the recent crisis. You know, people are working, celebrating, and letting off steam on this tool. It's a really, really cool tool uh, that we here at Assurity use. But why is it so popular? Well, it's popular because it's free. It's really easy to use. And it, candidly, it works on just about every device that, uh, that you have. But really, how do you get the most out of it? So we're going to talk about a little checklist for you to keep in mind each time that you use Zoom. These are pretty simple, pretty basic, but I do think that we need to discuss these just to make sure that we are on point. Number one, be early. You know, join five, 10 minutes early. Make sure that you are prepared. Make sure you've got a strong connection. Um, you know, make sure that your background and everything looks appropriate. Make sure your dress looks appropriate. Um, during that introduction phase when your client's first connecting, make sure you set aside some time to get them comfortable with Zoom, to make sure they're able to connect both the audio and video. And I'm a huge fan, especially in today's environment of using video. People like to see each other since we can't meet face to face. You know, you don't wanna waste half of your time playing with the settings. Um, and I actually had a call with an agent last week and I was going through uh, some illustrations, teaching them how to run some illustrations on a surety software. And he had commented that this was a tool. He thanked me for showing him the tool, but mentioned that this is how he was going to start connecting with his grandchildren who were spread out throughout the country. So Zoom is a great, great tool. It does have a whiteboard and annotation feature. So any of the normal documents and such that you would bring to an appointment with you, you're able to share with them electronically. I'm not a big fan of going through a, a big PowerPoint presentation over Zoom, but those handouts you can absolutely show. So you'll use these tools to share and allow them to point out things on your documents, uh, maybe that they have questions about. Also, embrace the pause. You know, as we're using this technology, um, sometimes using the internet, there can be slight delays as we've seen here in this presentation. Embrace the pause. If you ask them a question, give them a little bit more time than normal to answer because there may be that delay over the video conferencing. Um, so definitely embrace that pause. You don't want to be interrupting them talking over each other. And last but not least, make a good impression. You know, lighting in your background and your dress are so important. I would encourage you, if you're gonna set up a video conference, to make sure the lighting is pointed at your face. You don't want lighting behind you because it kind of drowns out your features. Uh, so if you have a window by, just make sure that uh, the placement is appropriate because you want your, your face to be shown vividly. 
look directly into that webcam. I know it's simple and sometimes it does take a little bit of training to get accustomed to, but looking directly into that webcam lets you know that you're paying attention, you're looking them in the eyes. Uh, staying secure with Zoom, you know, there have been um, some concerns regarding security, of course, as we talked about phishing attempts on email. But any of these web-based platforms, we want to make sure we're connecting and communicating with a customer um, that it is a secure connection. So here's some tips to use specifically with Zoom. There's a waiting room feature um, that you can opt for. Basically, when people join your Zoom meeting, they're going to be in a waiting room and you can select who comes in and when they come in. So that's a great way of making sure that some stranger does not join your Zoom meeting. Uh, if somebody does uh, happen to get in, there is the ability to manage participants through Zoom so you can actually add and remove people from the call. And last, you can use the lock meeting feature so that no more participants join the call. If you've got a Zoom meeting set up with the husband and wife, they both join, you can click that lock meeting feature to where nobody else will have to join and you can focus on your sales presentation. So Zoom is a great tool. Uh, video conferencing tool. I really encourage you to use the video. Uh, my experience here over this quarantine period is people love to see our faces. Uh, it just helps connect a little bit better. So with that, uh, you know, at this point, we've talked about, um, you know, kind of virtually setting up our messaging, how to connect with customers using social media. Um, so at this point, you've met with your client and you've had that initial conversation. At this time, I would like to bring on my friend and counterpart, Paige Phelps, uh, who's going to take it from here. So Paige, the floor is yours. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jeff, and great content that you have uh, shared with all of us this morning. I think there are some good things to be learned out of this situation. And um, you know, together with these different tips and tricks, we can all succeed in our business over the next couple of months. So uh, at Assurity, we are, you know, prepared electronically to help you through these difficult times and through this change in your environment. And so um, in addition to the pieces that Jeff talked about on, you know, getting in front of your client, approaching your emails and your voicemails differently, using that social media, gosh, everybody is online right now. Um, looking at different things, you know, maybe they're passing the time or maybe they're getting some information. We want you to take that and then to utilize those different things that we taught you um, in a variety of different ways with Assurity's different tools to really close that sale and really hone in on your skills. So going forward, we're going to talk about the different um, opportunities that Assurity has for you um, to be successful over these next few months. Uh, so first and foremost, the thing that we wanted to share with you is that we've put together these custom quoters um, that you can have access to. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't require a login to get that quoting information. So, you know, whether you're on a Zoom video conference with your customer or you've done a phone call and you're going to send them something to follow up with, um, this custom quoter is a great tool to utilize to kind of work together. Um, in an insurance language friendly way. So the nice thing about these quoters is they're not um, a bunch of technical jargon. They're not a bunch of the language that we're used to in our insurance specific industry. They're easy for a consumer to digest. And so the nice thing about it is maybe you're sharing that screen with them in a video conference and you're walking through that quarter together. Um, these custom quoters are a really great tool to access and get information in your client's hands quickly. We've got these quotas built out on myquote.assurity.com. So after this presentation, um, you know, maybe go check out that link and check out the quotas and start working through them. Um, but they have the products available that we typically see a need for quick quotes for. So you can go out and quote that term life, the disability, um, the Axiflex, the critical illness. We've got a really great uh, mortgage protection quota for the disability piece. And so I would encourage you to check that out. We're just trying to help you reach your customers in a way that makes sense for them, in a way that's comfortable for them. Um, it's all about understanding where your customer is at right now. And so we want to give you these quoters is an opportunity to engage with them in a very easy way, both for you and for that customer. 
Um, if you're interested, we can also customize these quotas to look and feel like you, like your business, like your insurance agency. Um, so that would be something I would suggest discussing with your regional sales team. Um, and I'll share that contact information for those regional teams here at the end of this presentation. Um, a second resource that we wanted to share with you that we feel is really important right now, and I know personally we've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks um, about our tele-application. So the idea is to provide as much convenience as possible, right? People are uncomfortable right now. Um, they feel like they don't have control over their situation. And so how can we take the process of submitting an insurance application and make it as easy as possible both for me as an advisor, but also for my clients so that we don't feel like we have a really lengthy process for them. Um, the tele-app is a great option and I'll share what products uh, are available for that tele-application on the next slide, but it's a really simple, easy way to complete an application. Basically, you're going to complete an electronic drop ticket. So it is available electronically, which is a key in our environment right now to not have to meet with someone face-to-face. Um, basically, you're going to grab client information, it's going to be the basic demographic stuff, and then you're going to drop that ticket to Assurity. Some tips for you, I would definitely let your client know that Assurity will be calling to schedule a phone interview with them. Um, so that's an important step in that process to let them know that, hey, you're going to get a phone call from Assurity. It's going to come from a Lincoln, Nebraska area code, the 402. And um, it's okay to answer that call and to answer those questions. They're going to ask questions about your health history and any additional information that they might need to underwrite that application appropriately. Um, if an exam is required, our phone interview team in-house will actually complete that um, exam request as well and make sure that we get that scheduled with the client. So basically after you drop that ticket, we're gonna take the heavy lifting off your shoulders and take care of that the rest of the way through the process. Um, it's a really nice convenience factor for you as you continue to work with different clients and move your business forward. Um, we do have a flyer with different tips on information to gather for that interview process. And throughout that process of dropping that ticket and offering that tele-application, you will still be looped in on all of the pending status. And you can receive those updates via Surelink and via your nightly feed. Um, that you receive as you do business with Assurity as well. So the tele-application I would highly recommend is a great opportunity um, to provide that convenience to your customer. The products available on that tele-application drop ticket are Century Plus Disability Income, our Business Overhead Expense Disability Income, Term Life, and Single Premium Whole Life. So Definitely pay attention if you're in those markets, if you have those opportunities, maybe you're making a note right now and saying, hey, this is an easy way for me to do business, to take a big load off of my plate, um, to drop that ticket and do that teleapplication with Assurity. The other thing that we want to share with you uh, that allows you to be really prepared in this virtual environment is we have our electronic application available via iPipeline. Um, and so that electronic application allows you to start, complete, submit the electronic application for your customer and not have to meet with them face to face, which is really important right now. Um, so we have eight different products available on that electronic application platform, which is the majority of our individual portfolio. Um, it's a really great option. I know everybody's looking for that right now um, for that solution. And so it's pretty cool. You can fill it out, you know, anywhere online. Um, save your progress, continue later. Um, maybe you're prepping cases in the morning, you're setting up your Zoom calls in the afternoon, you're meeting with those customers and you're filling out that application together. Um, there's, two, there's a signature option that allows you to do an email signature, which makes it really seamless so that you don't have to go to that client's house, you don't have to meet with them in person to get a wet signature or to verify via an ID. So that email signature is gonna be key in this process um, in submitting that electronic application and doing business electronically and virtually in this new environment. We do have a video link available for you um, about the e-application. So if you want a quick demo of how that electronic application works, we've got that link available. We also have a step-by-step -step guide that you can access. So if it's something that you're getting more familiar with, you're educating yourself about that electronic application process, 
Um, you can actually go to that step-by-step -step guide and look through different sections of that guide um, and get yourself up to speed on how that electronic application works. So lots of great tools and resources. We want you to feel prepared, feel confident going into your conversations with your customers um, and make sure that you, you really feel like you can do a good service to them still in an electronic environment. So let's talk about those products that are available electronically on that e-app. Um, again, our disability portfolio is available electronically. Uh, that's key. That's a, an, an advantage for a surety to have those disability products available in an electronic submission format. We also have our critical illness available, our whole life, our term life, our single premium whole life, and our AxiFlex accidental death benefits. And what I will remind you of when you're looking at these different products is that a lot of them have some sort of accelerated underwriting built into them. They have some sort of non-medical limit built into them. And so the ability to go through this process electronically and then to stay within those either accelerated limits, non-medical limits, or simplified underwriting limits um, allows you to not have to schedule an exam for the consumer. And I know that's a big talking point and a hot topic right now as well is how do we avoid the exam situation? So just know that our electronic applications do all have um, those limits and those opportunities within the product portfolio to do something non-medically accelerated or simplified. Okay, and then to kind of close the loop, um, you know, you've prospected, you've met with your customer in a different way than you're um, probably typically used to. Um, you've taken the application, the business has been processed and issued. We want you to know that your consumer has options on the back end as well. Um, fairly recently, we finished up this MyAssurity.com um, platform, and that's where your clients can go in and access their policy information. They can pay their premiums, check on claim status, make a claim. So it provides a lot of great information for that consumer to access their policy information electronically after the fact. So it doesn't end at the point of underwriting, at the point of policy issue, there still is that electronic format on the back end for those consumers too, to really go in and access their information. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions lately about paying bills and sending checks and stuff. Um, this is a great way and a great resource for current customers of yours to go out and pay those premiums uh, in an online platform environment. Um, in order for a client to register for myassurity.com, we do want to share with you that they will need a couple of different pieces to create that account on myassurity.com. So they would want their policy or their certificate number from their policy, um, the last four digits of the social security number, and then a valid email address in order to create that account and to access that policy information on myassurity.com. Um, to wrap it up and to finish kind of telling the story that Jeff and I wanted to share with you today, um, you know, Surety is here for you and here to support your business. I think that's the big thing right now is to really recognize the ability of empathy and empowerment in our conversations um, with each other, with our customers, and with our families. Um, everybody's going through kind of a interesting, difficult time, and we may feel like, you know, we don't have control over every situation, but your ability to relate to the customer right now and your ability to still help them uh, regain a little bit of control in their life by making a financial decision such as purchasing an insurance policy, I think is really powerful. And we're here to support that. Our call center is available to help you through those questions, to answer the questions about submitting business electronically. Um, our sales team is here to help you about, with uh, tips and tricks on doing business virtually. And so we're really here to support you in this time and over these next few months as you continue to develop, to grow, to change your business so that it fits your new process and your new model so that you can still be successful um, going forward. Uh, a lot of these tips and these things that we've given you today and these resources are things that can be implemented now, but also things that I would incorporate into your business um, on a permanent basis going forward into the future. Uh, we give you these opportunities and these resources, not as placeholders, but as things that can be permanent in your business and can really help you going forward um, when you're doing your long-term planning as well. So just know that Assurity is here. We've got our call center. We have our teams. We've got our underwriting teams, your salespeople. Everybody's here to support you in the way that you need to be supported in your business as you move forward. 
Um, with that, I will share our regional sales team. Uh, all of them are more than likely on this call listening in and ready to help you as your questions come in as well. So um, if you're looking at the map and finding your regional sales contacts, uh, that's awesome. Jot down their phone numbers um, and feel free to reach out at any point in time with questions about um, this presentation, the different tips and tricks that you've heard, or maybe it's just having somebody to talk to, to bounce ideas off of and utilize as a sounding board. We're all here and we're happy to do that. And we're really appreciative that you took the time today to spend with us to learn about, you know, building in new practices um, into your business. So with that, I'll leave this up for a couple of seconds and we will actually take questions as well. I know a lot of you have been submitting questions um, as we've been going through the presentation and we've been trying to answer those too, but I think some are prevalent for the entire group. So we will go ahead and take those questions at this time and share them with you um, so that we can uh, make sure that we're all informed properly. Um, so the first question okay. that I see that's kind of quite a bit is that uh, people have been asking if this is being recorded and it is being recorded and will be distributed to those who have registered for the webinar. So you will be able to watch this presentation again and go through and get this information at a second time. Um, okay, and yeah, I had you a, can uh, jump in at any point too. Yeah, no yeah, absolutely, you thank you. I, I, had a, I had a couple of questions. Um, one of them was, is this PowerPoint presentation available to send out? It is. It is available to send out. We're not going to send it out to to the mass distribution list, but if you would like a copy of it, I uh, just encourage you to reach out to your regional marketing team, your regional sales team, and they can provide you. Um, we also got uh, uh, some questions regarding Zoom and the security of Zoom. And so just to kind of reiterate, there's a few tools you can use on Zoom. Uh, number one, you know, once all your participants that you are expecting in the meeting are there, click that lock meeting button. Um, I like, especially if it's going to be more than just one or two people, I like the waiting room feature. That way everybody joins, they're in a waiting room, and then you allow them in uh, when you're ready, and you can allow whoever that you want in. So there are some tools uh, through Zoom to just try to make sure that it's as secure as possible. Yeah, great tip, Jeff. Um, one of the questions that I see in here that I think is a good question to answer for everyone are about um, Facebook posts and social posts that you can use. Um, so we don't have things right now developed that are specific to remote working, but we do have a lot of social content developed um, for consumer use in our disability and our critical illness lines. Um, so we've got some microsites out there, assuredydi.com and criticaloutlook.com that have content that you can use the image and the compliant text that we've put together to use on your social posts for LinkedIn or Facebook as well. So um, definitely go check out those resources. Your regional sales team can direct you to those uh, those pieces as well if you didn't jot down those links real quick when I mentioned them. So reach out to your regional team and they can direct you to those consumer approved posts. Excellent. I know we're getting a lot of uh, repetitive questions about the recording and sending it out. Uh, so let's keep looking, Paige. Do you see any other questions that we need to address? Um, there is a question here about the universal life electronic application. Um, that was a good catch by whoever asked that question because it's one of the few that we don't have available electronically at this point in time. Uh, but we are working to get that available electronically. So um, again, I would say reach out to your, your regional team. They'll have more information on that. Um, but it is something on the list of to-dos for us. And good catch on noticing that it's not being on the list. Um, there's a question in here about utilization of like an iPad or a tablet. Um, that is a great question. And our um, custom quoters are tablet mobile friendly. So you could pull those up on your phone, your iPad, your tablet. Um, it is very friendly in those types of platforms. Um, you can also use the iPipeline electronic application on your tablet or iPad, and so that would be a good utilization as well through one of those more um, movement-friendly devices where you can pick it up and take it somewhere else.
I will, there's a request to put the phone number and the extensions back up. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that slide so you guys can get the contact info for your regional sales team. Um, a lot of good questions coming in. Um, what we'll do here is if you have a question that you've asked and it hasn't been answered yet, we will reply to you if you just wanna hang on um, after we wrap up the main session, we will get an answer to you via this question feature. Um, or we will jot down your information and have your regional team reach out to you as well. Um, there's a question about e-signatures on that electronic application and when you get to the final signature point. Um, the electronic application allows you to utilize an email address as the signature option. And so the system's really nice. It just kind of generates the back and forth necessary toward the client. So when you are um, inputting the signature option, you'll actually input their email address and it will send a copy of that application to the consumer for them to review, put their email address back into the application, and then that's their signature and it's gonna be signed and sent off to a surety. So it's a really seamless process on collecting that signature for the electronic application. Um, another good e-app question, since we do have so many electronic applications available for our product portfolio, uh, the question is, is it possible to collect the information once and apply it to multiple applications? Um, that's a great question and a tip that I use often with agents and advisors. Uh, you can actually start an application and populate the information in there. And then there is a function in iPipeline where you can go ahead and duplicate that case which will allow you to keep the customer information in there, but then you would just go back in and change it to a different product, and it would open up that different product application. So that's a really great tip, um, great question, uh, easy way to do business for sure. Um, some questions about the links and being able to access them. Again, contact your regional team. They have a copy of the slide deck and can share that with you, um, and it, we'll get those links out in the slide deck as well. Um, so that you can access some of the different links that we've included in this presentation. Uh, term product, max amount for accelerated underwriting. So ages 18 to 50, we can do up to half a million dollars through our accelerated underwriting process. Ages 51 to 65, we can do up to 350,000 of base amount through the accelerated underwriting process. Um, which allows the client to complete that in a non-medical fashion. Hey Paige, we had a question about uh, our business overhead expense policy. I know uh, now is probably not, not the best time to be doing it. That's a little bit uh, longer, a deep discussion. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you do have questions on BOE, to reach out to your regional sales team. Uh, and they'll be able to address any questions that you have. And with that, I think we continue to get questions in. It looks like there's a lot of repetitive questions, but as Paige mentioned, we will continue to answer your questions if you want to stay on with us after this ends. Uh, we will continue to answer those questions. Uh, and if for some reason we miss you, please reach out to your regional team. Um, they are ready and willing and able to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate everyone's time today. Happy selling and um Everybody stay safe and healthy and extra love to the insurance industry today. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we wish you uh, the best in health and happiness and take care. Bye-bye.